Thank you for joining us today. Um, really excited about today's episode. Been wanting to sit down with Ron Peacock for quite some time, have him on. You know, Ron's just a real man of God. I know you're going to be blessed by uh, hearing his testimony of how he came to know the Lord. Just welcome to the program, Ron. Appreciate you. Thank you, Ken. This is a, <clears throat> a treat. It really is. Yeah, well, wonderful. It's a treat for us. Well, let's just kind of start at the beginning, Ron, okay. so the listeners kind of have some type of idea here. Uh, you know, everybody needs the Lord, and I know you're an evangelist at heart and yeah. really reaching out to the kids. Uh, so tell us, how did you come to know the Lord? Well, I was, uh, I was born in uh, the spring of 1955, and then in the spring of 1974, I was born again. And uh, my heavenly father uh, was very patient with me through those years because <clears throat> I was a bad kid. I mean, I had good parents. I feel like my parents were uh, decent people. They worked hard. They took care of business. But I was... Um, just bent toward darkness, even as a child. And uh, I got arrested the first time when I was 10 years old for stealing a 22 revolver in a sporting goods store. Okay. And by the time I was 16, I was a felon. Okay. Um, I stole my uncle's cancer pain medication to IV shoot because I could care less about him. All I cared about was me. Yeah, sure. I couldn't tell the truth. I couldn't keep my hands off of other people's stuff. Um, was a horrible friend, a huge disappointment to my parents. And why God pursued me, I have no idea. But <clears throat> I like to call that the hound of heaven. I'm telling you. It, you know, every saint has got a background, and uh, yeah. I, those are some things I didn't know about you. So that's great. You know, we have the people like Saul turns into a Paul. And so, you know, if any man's in Christ, he's a new creation. Uh, very interesting. I, I might start uh, calling you a criminal now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I say that because, you know, I'm not, I don't want to ever glorify anything in the past. Right. No. Uh, I'm ashamed of those things. Sure. Yeah. But I had uh, flunked out of SFA, made straight F's and D's, and uh, right. moved to Tyler and was managing a store in Tyler, clothing store. And uh, there was a young woman that was working in the store. She was 16 years old. Her mother was dead and her father was a raging alcoholic. And her name was Melinda. And she was a young life kid. And she would come to work. She worked part time for me after school. And she would come to work and do her job. Everybody else that I hired were all stoners and slackers. But this girl was a Christian. And she would talk to me about Jesus. And... I mean, it was annoying. I can remember telling her, Melinda, if you don't stop this Jesus stuff, I'm going to fire you. Do you understand me? And her bottom lip would quiver and she would cry. And I mean, there were times I got so, I mean, I just dog cussed this girl. It was horrible to her, mean to her. And she wouldn't quit. She just kept talking to me about the Lord. And uh, one night I was in complete meltdown because I'd been stealing from the store and I was strung out on drugs and couldn't manage the business. And I called her and I said, could you meet me in the parking lot at Kmart there in Tyler? And I said, and explain this to me. And yeah. I said, is this stuff really true? You're, you're not kidding me. It's really true. And she said, oh, it's absolutely true. Yeah. And that night uh, she led me to the Lord. I went home, I had a Roy Tan cigar box full of drugs, and I went down to the back of my apartment and stood over this creek and threw those drugs in the creek. And uh, I remember looking up to heaven and I said, I don't really understand what I'm doing, but uh, whatever it is, I'm all in. I'm all in. Yeah. And I think that was my call of the ministry at that point. Okay. You know, when you just say to the Lord, I'm all in, mm -hmm. he takes you. Yes. He takes you at your word. <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty dramatic. That's that's uh, easy to see how you're so passionate now. A lot of people, not that we want to encourage anybody to go out and do the top things you did, and I did some of that myself. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I think people who who have that type of experience really, you know, they get a fire in their bones. You know, when when they get 
when they finally surrender to that call of God, you know, they really turn uh, true repentance. So. Yeah. And I, I admire what she did because <clears throat> so often, even myself, when I get a little bit of pushback from somebody sharing the gospel, I just, I, I have a tendency to, to, to back off. This girl was like a, yeah. I mean, she wouldn't let go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm, I have that same tendency, you know, if, you know, if they don't want to, they don't want to hear it. Yeah. I live and let live, you know, we just try to sow the seeds how I look at it. But I'm glad she didn't quit. Yeah. There's something to be said about being persistent. Yeah. And caring for people enough to talk to them about the Lord. Um, it's a conversation that, uh, you know, that we don't have enough. I think in the church, um, just one-on-one -on -one witnessing and sharing the Lord, whether we're at a restaurant or whether, you know, at a mall or wherever we happen to be, you know, um, they're the only Bible most of, you know, they're not going to be reading the Word of God. They're going to be reading right. you, Ron, and they're going to be reading me. Read so, so from that, what year was this? That was in the spring of 1974. 74. I was 19. Okay. 19. Um, and really, I mean, I had, I had made a train wreck of my life uh, just by bad choices. And um, it just seems as though um, the desperation that was created by my bad choices was necessary to get me to where I made that decision, though. When things were going well for me, I, didn't, I wasn't even considering God at all. Yeah. So... Uh, just often when I see people right now and, and their life is a mess, I, I think they may be getting <clears throat> ripe. Yeah. yeah. So then uh, I contacted my uncle who was a, a Baptist pastor and I said, what should I do? And he said, well, we just started this Bible college here in Dallas. And uh, why don't you come up here and go to Bible college? And I was like, Sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> Perfect timing, too, it looks like. Yeah. yeah and so uh, I went to Criswell Bible College there at mm -hmm. uh, First Baptist Dallas. Yes. And was one of the early, uh, we were meeting in, there was no building or anything. We just met in Sunday school rooms there at First Baptist. And uh, those were the, the guys that discipled me. Um, right. And explained to me how to to live the Christian life and how to read the word, how to pray, how to share my faith and, and those kind of things. Yeah. And I'm grateful for that because yeah, awesome. it, it gave me a foundation, something to build on. Sure. sure. Uh, I got married right off the bat. I uh, just decided I didn't like being single. So I met this girl and we got married. Uh, I was 20 and she was 18. Mm -hmm. um, went all the way through Bible college together she had a similar background to me. Uh, she had come out of drugs and she was really heavy into the occult too, okay. which, you know, I, looking back now, I think probably we didn't address that as we probably should have <clears throat> because it reared its ugly head after we'd been married about five years. I'd graduated from Bible college and um, the people at her work, they had just discovered how to freebase cocaine, so they were all uh, freebasing, yeah. and sure. um, she got caught up in that, and just the the pull of drugs just wrecked her, yeah. and she took off with another guy, yeah. and it devastated me. Mm. Yeah. I, I remember just being, I was so mad at God, I can just remember thinking, why did you do this to me. You know, you, you allowed me to, you knew what was going to happen in the future and you still, you know, why didn't you close the door or say no or something, yes. you know? Yeah. And, uh, after she left me, I just went off the rails. Yeah. Uh, I can remember just shaking my fist at God and being so angry. And I started, I call it my Jonah kind of time. Yes. Cause I ran to South Florida and, and, <clears throat> connected with an old um, Vietnam vet guy that was a buddy of mine. Mm -hmm. And we hoboed all the way across from South Florida to Alaska. Mm. Okay. And I could not run away from God. Everywhere I went, there he was. Yes. That hound of heaven you're talking about. Yeah. Amen. And I can remember thinking, I remember one night um, 
just saying, would you please leave me alone so I can just sit here and be high and enjoy the silence? And he, God would not leave me alone. I I like to call that. I think uh, I had kind of the same feeling myself. I think a lot of people out there probably have is that once you've, once you know the truth, it's um, it's difficult to be a good sinner <laughs> to go yes. back and to go back and yes. to continue that because you know, you know, in the back of your mind, you know, there's a call of God that God is real and the word is real. The Holy Spirit's real. You know, I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Uh, it is uh, it's hard to run. You know, the psalm says, you know, you know, if I make my bed in hell, God, you're, you're you know, there. you're you're there. So uh, I fly on the wings of the dawn as far as I can go. Yes, even, yes. even in Alaska, there you are. And that's it. Yeah, you can run as far as you want to. You can't outrun him.